As the title of the game suggests, the history of the oldest house we have witnessed is a struggle for control. Being a nexus point of reality, the power that controls it has influence over all thresholds it connects to. During the main game, the Hiss attempted to seize it as well as the astral plane. Hedron and Polaris stood in opposition to this invasion. With Director Trench on one side and Dr. Darling on the other, these extra-dimensional entities were responsible for a civil war between the two former friends. This is not the first time this dynamic has played out, albeit under radically different circumstances. Unlike the events of Control, the previous war did not result in outright conflict. Instead, it was a Cold War with Director Northmore representing one side and Dr. Ash on the other. The details of this conflict are still not fully known. This is due to various attempts to hide any information related to what exactly happened in the Foundation 50 years before Jesse entered the oldest house. To get a clearer picture, we will have to look back to when the Bureau first made this remarkable discovery. This story is broken into two parts. In the first, the Bureau was welcomed in the Foundation. In the second, they were banished from it. Let us examine both factions leading up to this departure to get an understanding of what led to it. Dr. Theodore Ash Jr., the son of the former director, was one of the first across the threshold. With the new director on his way from Washington, Ash started to work to determine the nature of this place of power in order to give a report. One point of interest was a great pillar discovered in the crossroads that would later become known as the Nail. He'll expect answers, which is why I'm making these tapes. They're evidence that I'm at least trying to understand. Father searched his entire life for something like this, and we find it one week after he's buried. He always hated irony. Of course, Father, the great director, Ash, would have been the first man in. And look at me, his bookworm son. The supposed head of research who can't stop his legs from shaking long enough to step over the threshold. Soon after the arrival of Director Northmore, something changed in the Foundation that would alter the course of the Bureau's history. Northmore even made a discovery. A pistol placed on a stone pedestal in front of that strange ebony pillar. Seems like something out of a storybook, except the heroes usually find swords, not handguns but it is the perfect lure for someone like him. Hours after finding this weapon, Northmore cornered me to spout some nonsense about how the board had made him the director. He ran it about the title being meaningless before now, calling father and all other previous directors shams, frauds, and worse. I think this place is worse for Northmore than it is for me. Strangest thing? There was no pedestal in front of that pillar a day ago. This building has swallowed a dozen of my men and now it's handing out presents? Is it playing some sort of game? If it is, we're most certainly losing. Oh, we don't even know the rules. The distinction between their personalities are shown here. Dr. Ash wishes to understand the essence of the Foundation, and now, the mystery of the board. Director Northmore's personality keeps him ignorant, not caring about the who, what, or why, as long as the board continues to facilitate his power. As the weeks go by, Dr. Ash makes further discoveries surrounding the Nail, and Director Northmore insists that the Bureau be known as the Oldest House. This is the beginning of the board's influence, attaching itself into the Bureau's DNA. While the director continues to be directed by these extra-dimensional entities, Ash has a breakthrough. I spend my days investigating that odd pillar when Northmore found the handgun. The work was half-hearted at first, I admit. But then I discovered numerous non-Aristotelian energy channels converging at its base. Ley lines, dragon roads, Hyla Galenian, call them what you want. But this pillar is the crossroads. I started building something. Equal parts talisman and technology. An array that can impose order on the ley junctions. That's the idea at least. 
You'll see when I'm done. I prefer to work away from the pillar. I'm not the only one who feels like that thing has eyes. Based upon this, it appears the board is keeping a close watch on Dr. Ash and the work he is doing. Some of the researchers under him have negative responses to this unseen presence. My research staff complain of a presence watching them. Many have suffered nervous fits. Some were evacuated. While working in one of the deeper caverns to avoid the gaze of the nail, a new form of life was discovered. One that seemed interested in the work he was doing. Interior news. I've made some new friends. I met them while exploring the deeper caves. They're hard to describe, but imagine avant-garde sculptures of humans. I call them the id. They aren't hostile. In fact, they're polite and quiet, which is more than I can say for my colleagues. Most id are shy, but a few are quite curious. While I sat taking notes, one came to look at my sketches. I offered him my pencil, but that spooked it. What are the id? Residents? Prisoners? They remind me of the golems from Kabbalistic texts, or a type of homunculi. I know I shouldn't, but I gave them names. There's Hercules, Adam, Lilith, Copernicus, Mabel is the bravest. They're a funny bunch. I will go into further detail on the nature of the id in another video, but for now, let's summarize and say they are physical beings that are extensions of the board's will. Mindless creatures that approximate the appearance of humans. During this meeting, they were curious about what Dr. Ash was working on, the progress of his research. Roughly a week later, Northmore gave a new directive to the agents under his rule. Northmore has ordered an all-hands search for objects similar to the service weapon. He claims there are more in the house, though I don't see how he's so certain. He's been strange lately, talking about joining greater causes and frequently mentioning a pyramid. After pressing him, he finally described this pyramid to me. Inverted, black, mathematically perfect. Oddly enough, Adam and the other id have shown me numerous inverted triangles painted on the cave walls. Surely there's a connection, but I don't see it yet. As a result of this, Ash began to look into pyramid symbolism. I've been going through my library, researching pyramids and triangles. If that shape does relate to the board, as Northmore says, then perhaps our predecessors in the occult can offer some insight through their geometric knowledge. In esotericism, the triangle is closely associated with the Holy Trinity and other three-part concepts. Past, present, future, the mind, body, spirit. Interestingly, the term board also implies multiple parts. Upright triangles in Judeo-Christian imagery indicate ascent into the rational-slash-divine realm. Inverted, it signifies the descent into the corporeal, human realm. As far as occult symbols go, triangles are by no means rare. Flood, Levi, Kroll, they used that shape like it was going out of fashion. Standing on their base, triangles signify stability and strength. Inverted, on their points, they represent conflict and stagnation. Of course, the orientation is just a matter of perspective. Looking at the pyramid from below gives you one, from above, another. Northmore says he looks up at the inverted pyramid. I have to wonder, is anyone standing over it, looking down? At this point, the pieces began to come together. The board insisted that the building be called the oldest house. However, in response to learning that the foundation is older than the house itself, Jesse poses the question 50 years later, what is older than oldest? The cave drawings that the id point to showing the pyramid appears prehistoric. However, carbon dating on them shows they were made after the Bureau first arrived. 
the board is attempting to make it appear as if they are older than they really are, that they are one with the house, its original inhabitants. As Ash mentioned, the inverted pyramid signifies a descent into the manifest world. I mentioned in a previous video, the nail is a metaphysical object that binds the reality of the board to the oldest house. This group of entities are not what they seem. A month later, the departure began. There's been a change. Hercules and Mabel, I mean, it numbers three and eleven, attacked my staff today. Two fatalities. Three, if you count Mabel. She was always so kind. As a result, we are abandoning the Foundation. Northmore gave the order to transfer our resources to the upper floors. Now that my control points allow us to safely come and go from the New York streets. Up until this point, the id were curious about what the head of research was doing, but docile. Once the board determined him to be a threat, they dispatched the id to cause chaos and give an excuse to abandon the research. By this point, Director Northmore was soundly in their pocket, drunk on the power they gave him. He gave the orders to leave and grew aggressive to anyone who disobeyed the board's wishes. Let's read the final warning to get an idea of how far Northmore had fallen. To Director Theodore Ash Jr. As Director of the Federal Bureau of Control and Chosen Representative, liaison and benefactor of the great authority of the board, I demand your immediate withdrawal from the Foundation. Prior memos issued broadly to Foundation staff called for swift reassignment of all personnel to the upper floors of the house. All staff complied except you. This demonstrates a lack of respect for my office and the board itself. This is their house and we are their guests. We should conduct ourselves accordingly. Normally, such insubordination would be grounds for dismissal, but out of respect for your late father, consider this instead my final warning. The board and Director Ash chose me as successor to the office, and no amount of petulance will change that. Indeed, your actions seem to suggest you know better than myself, and by extension, the board. Permit me to assure you that that is not possible. Fuck you too. This demand was promptly ignored. During his time in the Foundation, Ash little by little grew attuned to the place, so much that he began to sense the presence of another. This governed the decision he made next. A few months ago, I would have been overjoyed to leave the Foundation. But now I realize I've grown fond of it. There's something deep in the stone here, deeper than that watching presence. Something warm. I feel it needing me. I won't go. I'll refuse. Northmore won't be happy, but so be it. I'm starting to see him for what he is. An impotent storm. Father Shade in a cheap suit. It is presumed he spent the following month alone down here in this ancient place. He was hunted by the id and threatened by Northmore, but at the same time became more and more linked to the house itself. His exposure began to change him. I have changed, though it's hard to know how or why. I no longer need tools to detect the house's veins, to hear it breathe. I can feel its blood churning beneath my bare feet. I have added my own illustrations to the walls, trying to solve some mystery that the oldest house whispers to me. I have to avoid the id as I do so. They haunt me. I don't blame them. They're just following the pillar's orders. Even poor Adam doesn't seem to recognize me anymore. The simple fact that Ash remained in the Foundation and his only enemies were Director Northmore and the id tell me one thing. The board itself has no power to enforce its will. It must rely on mindless creatures it forms from the earth and the influence it gains over people by bartering power to get its way. Simply by ignoring them, Dr. Theodore Ash Jr. was able to further research that the board wished to remain unknown. I've spent a long time contemplating the etchings of the tree and its roots. 
Did you know this city used to be a forest? I wonder if our oldest house were a different face back then. Or if it was always here. A 21st century office building since time immemorial. Can a place know the future? Can it change its skin? Can it wander? I always thought the esoteric world was my father's, not mine. But here, in this sacred place, I finally understand his devotion and his awe. In one report, he elaborated on this line of inquiry. The oldest house has revealed much to me during my months in the Foundation, but many questions remain. Primarily, the tree etchings bewilder me. What is their significance? If the house has changed shape over its lifetime as I've theorized, then was a tree its first form? I sent a team to the Schwartzman building in search of pre-settlement accounts of Manhattan Island. From those, I discovered a single relevant line. And there I found a tree not known to me. The devil twisted in its bark. With this seed planted, the good doctor began to see the man behind the curtain. An attribute of the oldest house is that no one can find it unless they are looking for it or are invited. The simple fact that the Bureau happened to stumble across it means that they were invited. Over the course of his time in the Foundation, Dr. Ash began to believe two things. One, that the board was simply a parasite latched onto the house. And two, the oldest house called out for help, but the Bureau did nothing. Without knowing it, the Bureau found themselves caught in the middle of a conflict extra-dimensional in nature. One that would cause a war between the director and head of research. With a blind man sitting in the director's chair, Dr. Theodore Ash Jr. made one final decision that would dictate the rest of his life. He would fight a cold civil war alone leaving a trail that would be uncovered 50 years later. If he could not end this conflict in his lifetime, he would ensure that someone in the future will. Nobody else hears the house. Their ears are too full of lies. We were shown the way inside so we could help, but all we've done is fall victim to the same parasite. I should have seen the web earlier. The strands between Northmore, the pillar, the gun, the id. What hope did we have? Thrown into this conflict beyond our comprehension. I've decided to rejoin the Bureau in the upper levels. To end my long absence spent in the Foundation. Northmore will be angry at me for disobeying him. That's just his way. But I don't care. I need to remain in the oldest house to help however I can. I doubt I can steer the Bureau back on the right course, but I have to try. How did I go so long without a purpose? Without devotion? I can hardly remember how it felt. I realize how grateful I am to Father for setting me on this path. I wish I could tell him that. <laughs>